It's a privilege to have uh, Larry and the family today. And uh, a new addition, Dylan, is singing. You know, he sings with us in praise and worship, but Absolutely. he's singing with him today. I love to see that. But I'm just going to tell you a quick story. When I was a kid, uh, we used to go to these, my parents loved to go to these gospel sings. I don't know why they call them gospel sings, but but they were really gospel concerts, but they called them gospel sings. But when I was a young boy and my brother, my they would drive for hours to go to one of these, and it was always on the weekend. And my brother and I liked them, but not as much as they did. But we, <laughs> we, but, uh, we went to a lot of them. But what I noticed in these concerts were a lot of these quartets. They had a tenor, first tenor, and the guy always sounded like his nose was plugged or, you know, he was real nasally type, type singers. You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, but when Mr. Ford got up and sang, he was clean, pure, you know, it was just like that, a good tenor sound. I was like, well, why can't those other guys sing like him? <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was a long time ago, but and I think they used to call you the Irish tenor, isn't that correct? That's right, I, I remember that, it's a long time ago. But uh, God is busting with it. Not that long ago, <laughs> Danny Sandiford. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, God's blessed him with an incredible talent and, and his family, too. And, and Larry's taken that talent around the, the world to minister to people, to proclaim, proclaim the love of Jesus. He's been an ambassador for Christ. In fact, they call him the gospel music's ambassador to the world. And that, he's, been, he's earned that title, and he's earned Grammys. And he doesn't want me to tell you all this, but <laughs> you can read it. But, uh, but he's one of us, and I, I know he, he's seen over 75 concerts a year. He told me just a few minutes ago that he had been singing a lot this season and it was working on his voice. And I pray to God that he, he hangs in there. But he's, he's been a blessing to him and his family to us and it's been a pleasure knowing them through the years. And uh, I'll turn it over to them and, and let them bring a message to us of hope and love. I love that you have. Amen. We're going to do a couple more Christmas songs. Can we extend it? My mother explained to me that the 12 days of Christmas actually starts December 25th. So Epiphany is not until. She doesn't, y'all. Epiphany is not until January 6th when the three wise men appeared. So I always <laughs> leave all my decorations up because it's a lot of work, ladies, right? We need to get all the good we can out of it. I leave all my decorations up till January 6th so we can just keep right on celebrating Christmas. So we're going to sing a couple. We're going to do some other things, but we're going to start off with Joy to the World. The last time we do it this year, sing it loud with us. We'll divide y'all up in the end. You'll figure it out. It's the fun part. Everybody sing with us on this one, okay? We start from the beginning. Joy to the world. Here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let Earth, Let Earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While hills and floods, rock fields and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He And what 
wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders and wonders of his love. Over here, joy. joy. Here, joy, joy. joy. yourself a hand on that. You deserve it. Amen. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. Was so what's out. next? We're going to do glad tidings. Our songs today we picked for hope and joy. So sing with us if you catch on glad tidings. <laughs> of great joy, tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, behold, I bring to you glad tidings of comfort and joy. Ages of waiting had reached an end when the herald angel appeared, saying peace on earth, goodwill to men, rejoice the same. of great joy, tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, behold, I bring to you glad tidings of comfort and joy. Ages of time now have come and gone since that night in Bethlehem. Yet still today, for all of the world, God sends his of great joy, tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, behold, I bring to you glad tidings of comfort and joy. Sing hallelujah, Messiah has come. Let every nation proclaim. He is Savior, Redeemer, the light of Jesus is his name. Glad tidings of great joy, tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, behold, I bring to you glad tidings of comfort and joy. Fear not, behold, I bring to you. So as many of you know, uh, everything changed in March. And all of our lives seemed to take an abrupt halt, and we changed everything. And through all of that, I know that, as my mom says, God was not surprised. And he's still, he's still in the middle, and he's still in control, and he's still taking care of us. And we decided to do this song today because it reminds us that when things come to a screeching halt and it seems uncertain, that he's still the peace speaker.
It was such a lovely day. The sun was shining bright. The gentle winds were blowing my way. Not a storm cloud in sight. Then suddenly, without warning, a storm surrounded my life. But even in the storm, I could feel the calm. And here's the reason why. I Peace, peace, 
Aren't you glad you know his name?
Weeping only last night. How long will this night be? In the shadow of your burden, it's hard for you to see. Though the trials you may face may bring you to your knees, <laughs> there's no better place for you to be than at the end of your ability. Listen. When you've done all you can to stand, stand on Him. Though all the world around is sinking sand, when it seems that you just can't go on, in your weakness He'll be strong. When you feel like you've done everything, you can just stand. When it seems there's one more mountain, one more war to fight, one more time you feel forsaken and there's no hope in sight, Remember where he brought you from <laughs> and what he's brought you through. There's nothing that's too hard for God to do. For through it all, he's always seen you through. When you've done all you can to stand, stand on here. Though all the world around is sinking, is sinking sand, when it seems that you just can't go on, in your weakness he'll be strong. When you feel like you've done everything you can, just Every step he takes with you and every prayer he's heard. When you've done all you can, you've done all you can. You just stand on him. The world around around is sinking sand. When you feel like you've done everything you can and you think that you have finally reached the end. When you feel like you've done everything you can oh, just, just stand, stand. Just stand When you think Reach the end. You just stand. Amen. Sing it. This will be our last Christmas song. And it's really not a Christmas song. Um, it's got the words Christmas oh, yes in it. it. But it's it's a it's a prayer. In the busy Christmas noise All the lights, the bells, the toys I have found you are 
the only source of comfort and of joy. Lord, I want your presence for Christmas. I want your presence for Christmas. I long to feel your spirit speak. is worthy for he Lord. 
this next song we don't normally sing in our Christmas program. We don't normally sing it at all, actually. We actually, Dad and I, learned it as a special request for uh, my cousin's wedding. But we determined that, especially after this year, that it seems especially appropriate. So that's our prayer for you this morning and in the coming year. Um, Ron, show them my favorite picture. 
I don't know how well you can make out what this is because it's a little bit impressionistic. It's a painting by a man named Ron Diciani. I know that when we think of Christmas and the images of Christmas, most of us think of nativity scenes, we think of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, or we think of the shepherds out in the field, or some of us have in our homes little statues of the three wise men. And um, how many of you all saw the convergence of uh, Saturn and Jupiter? Is that what it was? The other night? Okay, well, that was not the star of Bethlehem, but it was pretty cool anyway. We watched it in Amy and Darius's front yard, and Jimmy and Frida and Larry and I nearly froze to death, but the kids thought it was wonderful, so we sat out there with them. Well, this image, I hope that you can see it well enough to see, it's of an elderly man holding a baby. And this man's name is Simeon. Simeon served in the temple in Jerusalem, along with a woman named Anna, for many, many years. And all that time that Simeon was serving and being obedient and doing everything that he knew to obey the law and please the Lord, all that time he was waiting for the Messiah to come. So when Jesus was about 40 days old, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple as was required by the law to be dedicated. And no one told Simeon who was coming. He was in the temple daily serving. And Mary and Joseph arrived that day and they handed the baby Jesus to Simeon. And the Holy Spirit let him know who that was. And he looked at that baby, look at his face, and he said, my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord, the glory of my people, Israel. You know who Israel is? Israel is you and me. We have been grafted into the lineage of Abraham. We are Israel. We have seen God's glory. I thank the Lord for his presence here this morning. I thank the Lord for his presence all through the Advent season. I thank the Lord for his presence this year when we saw people. We've seen people in our own families, our church families, struggling and hurting. And this is what I said every time. You're not surprised, Lord. I know you see everything that's going on, and I know that you are in control. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep every promise that he has made to us. He is faithful. One of his names is faithful. In the Old Testament, all of you know this, that Moses went up onto the mountaintop. And in one of his experiences, he said to the Lord, Show me your glory, Lord. I want that to be my prayer today. And I hope that's your prayer today. In the days and in the weeks to come, Lord, show us your glory. God's glory is his manifest presence. It's not just, oh, I know the Lord walks with me every day. He walks with me and he talks with me. I want to see and feel and experience the presence, the glory of God. You know, one of the Beatitudes that I have always found a, a little difficult to understand is the one that says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does that actually mean, poor in spirit? Poor in spirit means humility. And what humility means is this. Let me, let me just ask you something. Do any of you ladies shop, shop on Mar Facebook Marketplace? Okay, Amy and I love Facebook Marketplace. But 
when you're looking at an object that somebody is offering, sometimes it's very hard to determine its size. Because if you put a lamp, just a picture of a lamp on the website, you don't really know how tall the lamp is or how big it is. But people who are smart enough to post something for sale and then put something beside it that helps you figure out its actual size. You understand what I mean? OK, this compared to this. OK, then I know about how big it is. Humility is when we place ourselves here and then we actually experience the presence of God. I know who I am, not in relationship to my husband or my children or my church or you. I know who I am in relationship to God the Father. That's humility. When you understand who you are compared to him. At Christmas time, there are lots of people who come to church who may not come as often during the rest of the year. And I can't even see well enough anymore to see all your faces out there and see which ones of you are those who are regular Sabbath attenders and some of you may be here to make your mom and dad happy. You just came to make your mom and dad happy. And I know that most of you out there have had an experience. You can remember the time. Do you know that old gospel song? I remember the time I can take you to the place where the Lord saved me. I remember the, the day that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I was 13 years old, and that's a whole other story. But I remember the specific time. And most of you here remember that time. Some of us who are here made a commitment to the Lord. And maybe because of, you know, it's not really big sins in our lives, the ones that preachers preach about all the time, lying and stealing and robbing and saying ugly words. Those aren't the things that draw us away from the Lord. What, is, uh, what Satan loves to use is busyness. If you can just so be so busy, you don't have time for him. If you're busy on the weekends and you think, well, I plan to go to church, but I really need to do this today. Or I plan to spend time with him in the morning, but um, I have to hurry up and get this done. It's busyness that draws us away from him. So some of us here may know him but in this new year, in this coming new year, we know in our hearts that we need to recommit ourselves to making him central. He is the center of the wheel of which everything else in my life revolves. There also may be some people here who have never really understood or acknowledged who Jesus Christ is, the savior of the world, who came to save the whole world. But he also came to save us individually. I don't know who I might be speaking to who is here, who might not know Jesus personally. You know the story. You know the Christmas story. You know about Mary and Joseph. You even know about his life, and his death on the cross. You know all the stories. But there has never been a day when you said, Jesus, I understand that you came for me. You would have come just for me. So if that's you here today, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is here specifically asking you to come. Larry and Amy are going to come and sing a song now that all of you know. It's a little different melody, but it's a wonderful song. If you're one of the people who might be thinking, you know, I really know that I need to 
make a decision. That I, de I don't need to put this off any longer. I need to make a decision and accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Or I need to really recommit my life to him and, and make him the center of my life in the coming year. But if you're one of those souls that grew up in church, as we did, and you know that you have walked out of his light and away from his presence, then you might think, well, first I'm going to get better. First I'm going to fix myself up and become presentable to the Lord. I'm sure you know this. You don't have to get ready to accept Jesus. He wants you to come just exactly as you are. You can trust him to take what you offer and turn it into what he intended for your life to be. You can come just as you are. Just as I am without one plea, but that my blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee. Just as I am. thankful for his presence here today. Yes. If you could all stand with me. Okay. We're going to, uh, we're going to all pray together in case there's somebody out there who felt, you know, because of all that's going on, that you felt awkward about raising your hand or express, uh, expressing how the Holy Spirit has worked with you this morning. We're all going to pray together, just like it was the first time. So pray with me, everybody. Father, we thank you for being, oh, I want you to repeat what I say. Father, I thank you for being here with us this morning. Father, I thank you for being here with us just this morning. Thank you for coming just to meet with me. Thank you, thank for, you for coming, coming just to meet with just me. me. I accept you 
as my Savior. I accept, I accept you, you as, as my, my Savior. Savior. I thank you for being my Lord. I thank, thank you, you for, for being giving my, my Lord. Lord. I trust you to direct my steps. I trust, I trust you, you to, to direct, direct my, my steps. steps. I look forward to the next year. I look forward, forward to, to the, the next, next year. year. And my walk with you. And my, and my walk, walk with, with you. you. Which will be a great adventure. Which, which will, will be a great adventure. adventure. Thank you again, Father. Thank, Thank you, you again, again, Father. Father. Thank you uh, that your Holy Spirit is here. Thank, thank you, you that, that your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit is here. And thank you for your precious Son, Jesus. And thank you for your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. My heart was touched. I felt the presence of the Lord. And I, I would just want to thank the Ford and the Cochran family for, for being with us today and blessing us with this message. A uh, message of hope. Message of, message of joy and a message of peace that only the Lord can give. <laughs> Amen. Just a few announcements. The deacons are going to dismiss by rows. They're going to start at the front and go to the back. And as, as you leave, there will be uh, some offering plates at the doors back there for a love offering. Please be generous and we'll support and our pre show our appreciation to, to their ministry. And if you don't have it with you today, you can always put it in a tithe envelope and mark it for Larry Ford and put it in next week even. But, uh, but thank you so much. Uh, let's, let's close in prayer. Our, our Father in heaven, we thank you for Larry Ford and the family and, the, and their ministry and, and for the message they brought us, that message of hope, the message of love, that message of peace, uh, the peace that only you can give. And uh, continue to bless their ministry and bless this love offering that they will receive today. And, and Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your unfailing love. And as we enter a new year and the challenges that it will bring, we, may we remember how you led us in the past, knowing that you will guide us, protect us, shield us as we go through 2021. We put our trust, hope in you, Lord, for there is none like you. And I'll leave you, Lord, now in closing, I want to pray this prayer for the people of God. It says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.